Check one, two. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to another episode of Wake the Love Up. It's your boy, Burnout Washburn, sending you all the love, all the good vibes. It is a beautiful day to be alive. I have a powerful, rich episode in store for you today. And I'm so grateful and honored to be sharing this message. First and foremost, huge, huge, huge thank you, infinite gratitude to all of you who have been sharing this podcast. We've been getting more and more downloads every week, more and more people messaging me on Instagram, letting me know that they're getting value from this and this is changing their life and helping them up level in all sorts of magical ways. So I can't thank you enough um, if you're screenshotting this and posting it on your story. That helps so much if you're leaving reviews. Um, shout out to everyone that's on uh, on my Patreon supporting me. A lot of you guys are throwing 5, 10, 20 bucks a month to support this message and just help wake the love up. So I, I really can't thank you guys enough from the bottom of my heart. Anything that you're doing to help spread this, even um, if you just text the link to one person or you shoot me a quick message saying, hey, I listened to today's episode and I learned X, Y, and Z. I can screenshot that and share it on my stories. And it just, it helps awaken the love up and grow the soul tribe. So uh, more and more people are getting impacted every week. And I just, I really can't thank you guys enough. So without further ado, let's jump into today's episode sponsored by Kongan Water. Let me take a nice sip of this beautiful living water here. Uh, mm, hydration is key. Um, so I'm just super, super stoked to be sharing this message today because this is actually an episode that I've wanted to record for a really long time and I didn't quite feel qualified to share this message when I first started learning a lot of this stuff because I hadn't fully stepped into a level of embodying it on the way that I wanted to. Um, and now I'm finally at a place in my life where I can share this message authentically from the heart in a powerful way. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's some rich gems about to be dropped. So I wanted to record an episode all about abundance, prosperity, overcoming scarcity, overcoming the lack matrix, because we are stepping into the new earth. We are ascending and so many of us are waking up and what i really believe is happening is there's this powerful shift in energy as as mother gaia our beautiful planet earth is waking up and ascending to a higher frequency and and our whole collective is i'm noticing a shift in old systems collapsing old paradigms falling apart and new amazing things being birthed right now and part of that I've seen a lot of shifts in the financial space going, bringing more prosperity and abundance to good people, to spiritually aligned people who are in harmony with the greater good. And I think, you know, we're shifting out of the times where all of the money's controlled by 1% of these selfish, greedy people who don't care about the earth and don't care about other people and all that stuff. I think all those times are shifting and now we're stepping into a new age where all of us are going to awaken our abundance and especially the, the benevolent people who are in tune with the higher good are starting to become more and more prosperous. A lot of us are starting new businesses and unleashing new products and services to the world that are uh, environmentally conscious, that are uh, heart-centered that are birthed from compassion. So a lot of us are starting to like, you know, elevate our vibration and then bring our magic to the world and it's creating more prosperity for all of us. And we're shifting out of this fight or flight nervous system. We're shifting out of the old scarcity paradigm, the old lack matrix that's been just trapping and plaguing humanity, at least 99% of humanity for, you know, a long, long, long time. So... I want to share a handful of really practical things that you can go apply to your life right now. Some things that you can start doing immediately that are going to help you shift into new levels of abundance and prosperity 
And abundance and prosperity is not just about money. That's part of it. But, you know, it's being abundant in all things, you know, health, having lots of health, lots of amazing relationships, abundance of free time, abundance of vitality and energy, abundance of inspiration and creativity. Um, all of these things are are the frequency that we're shifting into. And this is something that I've str I struggled with most of my life. I spent most of my life just super struggling constantly stressed about money constantly worried constantly in living in fear living in fight or flight and that has made my life a lot more difficult than it needed to be so i'm I'm so grateful to be waking up and uh, reprogramming myself to this this point in my life where now things are going well i'm able to effortlessly create abundance from an infinite source. I am a divine bringer of money into all situations where it is needed. And I'm no longer living in this stress panic. You know, I, I used to cry myself to sleep over money. I used to wake up and just immediately be stressed out about it immediately. You know, five minutes into my day, I'm already just like super scared and my nervous system's crazy because I'm worried about some bill that's due that I don't have the money for or whatever. And, you know, that frequency is what I lived on for a long, long time. You know, you guys have heard about me getting evicted from not being able to pay rent and my car being repossessed because I couldn't meet the car note. And um, all of it was my frequency. It wasn't that I was lazy. I was never lazy. In fact, when I was the brokest I've ever been, I was working the hardest. So money does not come from hard work. Um, it comes from being aligned and from believing that you are worthy and deserving of it. So I'm going to share a handful of things that pulled me out of that scarcity paradigm and brought me into this place that I'm at now where, you know, I just, I'm living in the flow. I'm living in the magic where every day I'm doing what I love. I seem to be thriving on a lot of levels. My kitchen is always stocked up with the highest quality organic living foods and superfoods and all that. Um, the water that I drink is the most abundant, magical water you could drink. Um, things are going well. I'm able to travel. I'm able to buy myself clothes. I'm able to give generous gifts to people. I'm able to support causes and donate to charities and things that I believe in that are making the world a better place. And um, I'm no longer just like letting money just run me and control my emotions. So, um, the first, and this is an episode that you're going to want to listen to multiple times and or take notes on because uh, we're going to be moving fast. So there's going to be a lot of gems that I'm dropping. So the first practical thing that you might want to write down that will genuinely help you. And if it even helps you like a fraction as much as it helped me, then it's definitely worth checking out. So it is a book called The Illusion of Money by Kyle Cease. This book changed my life. I read it front to back like three times and then I gifted it away and I'm about to go buy like 10 more copies and gift them to some people in my life because it's that powerful. Kyle Cease is actually, he was a comedian, an actor, and then he kind of turned into like a, a self-development type dude and now he's just like on this like enlightened spiritual frequency where he's just like, yeah, life-changing. So if you go purchase the book, The Illusion of Money, it's also a documentary, and I believe you get to watch the documentary for free on YouTube. Um, and I know you get to watch it for free on his website if you order the book. So the illusion of money really helped me stop being so fearful about money and stop being so controlled by money. And it's it has to do with so much more than money. Basically, the book will set you free if you really, there's a lot of cool exercises in there. And if you do the exercises and apply what he's talking about, it will absolutely change your life. And it, it set me free in the way of thinking that like things like freedom and security do not come from external sources such as money or jobs or other people. I used to always think that security came from an, an, an amount of money. If I had X amount of money in my bank account, then I would feel secure. Or if I had, or I thought freedom was the same way. If I had X, if I had a, unlimited money, billions of dollars then I would experience freedom. I'd be able to do what I want, when I want, with who I want, where I want. Um, so that would be this sense of freedom. But really he wakes you up to like all of that is an illusion. Freedom and security come from inside. They come from our connection to source energy. 
they don't come from a paycheck or from money. So um, I could do easily a whole episode just on what I learned in this book. Um, another thing that was powerful in that book is this exercise called the average alignment score, where you basically go through everything in your life, all the people you hang out with, all the th- habits and routines that you do, all your physical stuff, like all, and you, you kind of just, you write this alignment score one out of one, zero through 10 for each thing. And, um, then you add them all together and then that's like your average alignment score. So when I did all, I did all these things, I would put like, um, hanging out with my daughter. That's obviously a 10. And he, the exercise is all about not thinking about it. Just what is the first number that you feel in your body before you even have a chance to in- intellectually process it? Okay. Is making beats 10 meditation, 10 hanging out with my daughter, 10 smoking cigarettes, three. Uh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So you like, you start to do label all these things, anything that you spend your time, energy, money on emotions on whatever, and you score it and then, um, you add them all together. And when I first did this, I got like an 8.6 or something like that out of 10, out of 10. So that was pretty good. I was pretty aligned. And then just doing that exercise gave me some clarity on some things to let go of and some things to shift. And then I did the exercise again, like a couple months later and I got like a 9.4 or something like that. So I elevated my average alignment score just by like becoming aware of all the things I was doing and what really felt good. You know, even my relationships is hanging out with this person, like a 10, you know, and the idea with this exercise is to get rid of anything that's not a 10, basically, you know, especially at first you get rid of anything that's like a six or below. And then as you work your way up, you're like, I pretty much want every single area of my life to just be a full 10 out of 10. Otherwise, why am I putting any energy towards it? Um, and you know, you don't have to justify the things that are like full tens. Like you just know that they're tens. Like, I don't have to say, Hmm, I, my daughter, I don't know. Like I, I like hanging out with her. It's probably like a eight or nine or I don't know. Like, you know, she does get do this and that for me or something. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't think about it rationally. I'm just like, boom, instant 10, obviously. So it's a really powerful when you do it right. Um, and that's just like one of like 80 different things that this book did for me. So I highly recommend Getting the Illusion of Money by Kyle Cease. And then another recommendation that you're going to want to write down right off the bat is another book that changed my life called The Abundance Codes. The Abundance Codes by Regan Hillier and Juan Pablo Barahona. Um, Juan Pablo is from Costa Rica. Regan Hillier is from um, New Zealand. And they are just, they embody abundance on every level. And this book talks, it's way more than just about money. It's about emotions. It's about uh, your health. It's about your relationships. You know, it's about all different aspects and levels of wealth. So it has a lot of uh, sacred geometry codes. And just looking at these codes, looking at this artwork, soaking the sacred geo into your pineal gland, like, that can help activate abundance and activate these codes. And then eat, there's 52 codes. So I like I did it for a whole year straight, activated one code per week. Um, and there's different breath work modalities and stretches and poses and things like that. And each code is only like a few pages long. So you can you can get this book and work through it like 10, 20 minutes a day and really shift your life in some profound ways. And the the authors are really embodying what they're talking about. They have they're both like in just insanely good shape. Like they just look amazing. Um, Juan Paul's like fifty something. He's all like shredded six pack abs and always has this big bright smile. And Regan's just like a total goddess. Um, and they're just traveling the world. They're always in the highest five locations. Always on the ocean. Always in places like Bali and Costa Rica and Peru and um, really beautiful to see them living their life in a and just making a positive impact. And, you know, they're just thriving, like financially, they're making millions and millions of dollars. Emotionally, they're deeply fulfilled Uh, relationship wise. They have just thriving, deep, meaningful connections. Um, So many areas of life or their life are thriving. That's why when I found them, I started listening to them studying everything they were doing and applying their wisdom 
because obviously they were getting way better results than I was. So I, I borrowed their belief systems and started reprogramming myself to think and act and, you know, be like them. And my life started becoming more like theirs. Like now I'm traveling more. Now I'm feeling more beautiful. Now I have better relationships. Now material possessions are coming to me with more ease. Um, yeah, a lot of things are better. So the illusion of money and the abundance codes, those are two books that really helped me. Um, when you're, when you're really aligned with your higher self, this is one thing grandmother ayahuasca showed me is that when I'm aligned, when I'm just taking action from my higher self, living from my heart, living out my Dharma, fulfilling my soul's purpose, then money's just as easy as breathing. It's not even something I need to think about or worried about. It'll just always be there if I'm aligned. And when you're in aligned overflow, that's when you can give and serve. So you can't get you can't give out anything you don't have and you can't really be a philanthropist when you're struggling to feed yourself and all that stuff. So you got to fill yourself up and you fill yourself up with energy. You fill yourself up with doing this work with the meditation, with the embodiment practices, with, you know, reading these types of books and doing these, doing the breath work and doing the exercises and looking at the sacred geo and um, surrounding yourself with expanders. That's a big, big part of activating abundance is surround yourself with people that are on the abundance frequency, that are thriving, that are generous, that are doing well. I will not hang out with like super broke scarcity people that are always stressed and worried about money anymore because I'm going to become like them. So I can't afford to have them in my life. Literally, um, my daughter needs food, so I literally can't afford to have scarcity mindset people in my life. Um, not to say that I'm like super fragile because my frequency is is really grounded and strong regardless of who I'm around, but surround yourself with expanders, if you get around people that are making more money than you, you're naturally going to make more money. You're naturally going to just vibrate on their frequency. If you're around people that are generous, you're going to become more generous. Um, and generosity and gratitude are two of the key frequency activators when it comes to prosperity and abundance and really creating anything that you want in your life. The more grateful you are, the more you'll attract. The more you attune your energy to appreciation, the more the universe will deliver. So I'm constantly, consciously focusing on what I'm grateful for. And I have a, a beautiful gratitude practice. As you know, every morning I'm writing my gratitude journal and it's like my favorite part of the day. And then I try to carry that energy with me throughout the day. You know, the first thing I do when I wake up is I look around my house and try to notice all the things I'm grateful for. You know, and how ab I'm so abundant. Look at all the oxygen I can breathe. There's just infinite oxygen and it's never ran out my whole life and it probably won't run out the rest. Of, like, I just, I'm just so blessed. Um, so being grateful will bring, whatever you're grateful for, you'll attract more of. So being grateful and being generous are two keys, you know, because the only things that you get to keep in life are that what you give away. And you, it's impossible to outgive the universe the more you give, the more you'll receive. As long as you're giving from an authentic heart space and you're not giving because you think you're going to get something back, that's actually on the frequency of scarcity and lack, you know. So the frequency of genuinely giving because you just want to give because you're overflowing and you want to share it and you want to bless others, that kind of giving because you just truly want to make a difference will bring back all your money multiplied. One of the one of the mantras that I use is that every dollar I circulate comes back multiplied. So every time I put my debit card in a machine or tap my phone for the Apple Pay at a grocery store, I always affirm that every dollar I circulate comes back multiplied. You know, I just barely got back from the grocery store and I spent 15 bucks. And as I tapped my phone, I said, oh, that's coming back multiplied. I'll probably make 150 bucks unexpectedly just because I circulated this out in a conscious, abundant way. Um, and I really, I also believe that the more you're conscious about what you're consuming and where that money's going to and what it's supporting and how it's affecting the world, then, you know, you're in tune with the higher good. And the more you're in tune with the higher good, the more the universe will support you. So if you're buying a bunch of stuff from Walmart or from companies that just don't care about the earth, that only care about making money and, um, 
I'm not trying to like put Walmart under the bus. I'm just, that's just like the easiest example that came off the bat. Um, if you're just supporting companies that are screwing over the environment and screwing over animals and other humans and doing whatever they can do to make a profit and they don't care about polluting and all this stuff, like then you're not in harmony with the greater good and you're voting with your dollar. So you're creating a more toxic world every time you support companies like that. And it's not about feeling guilty or blaming yourself or judging yourself or judging others. It's just waking up to the fact that every, every dollar that you circulate is a, a vote that you're casting on how you want the world to be. So if you want the world to be a more beautiful, harmonious place, then support companies that are doing it with integrity, that are operating from a higher place. And the universe will continue to support you. Um, so every dollar you circulate will come back multiplied and it'll come back extra multiplied if you're supporting companies that are doing it good. Because, you know, if if any piece of the earth or any type of animal or any other human or any environment gets screwed over in the process from which your goods get to you, you are ultimately responsible. And when I say responsible, it doesn't mean the same thing as blame or judging. It means just you are able to respond. You have the ability to respond in a more conscious way in the future. And so um, you question your goods. Where is this made? How is it distributed? How did it get to you? What, you know, how does this affect the earth? If you buy this product or this service, like who is benefiting, who's getting hurt, you know? It's all a cycle, and we want to try and be as conscious about that as possible and as balanced with that as possible. Um, another thing that really, really, really helped me override scarcity frequency and just step into new levels of abundance is going through the 21 Days of Abundance Meditation Challenge by Deepak Chopra. My friend Takaya invited me to join this meditation group several months ago. And it's been one of the most profound things I've ever done. I'm actually going through it for the fourth time now because every time I go through these 21 days, I just become more and more abundant. I worry less. I have more faith and trust in the universe. And it's just a beautiful meditation. It only takes like 10, 15 minutes a day. And then you do some journaling with it. Uh, so if you're interested in joining that, you go through it with a group. And there's like very specific instructions to go through it. So... Um, 21 Days of Abundance Challenge by Deepak Chopra. It is absolutely beautiful. If that's something you're interested in, shoot me a message. It's just at Burnell Washburn on Instagram. Or you can email me, burnellwashburn at gmail.com. I'll put links to both of those in the show notes. You can reach out to me and I can get you involved with one of these groups. So we can go through the 21 days together and um, that's magical. And then I also have something that's really similar called the 10 Day transformation calling in the cash and it's a very similar type of thing but more geared towards creative entrepreneurs specifically and that's kind of something it's my own version of the Deepak thing kind of um so another mantra that I have one of them that I learned from the Deepak 21 day challenge is I create abundance from an infinite source I create my personal abundance from an infinite source. And I repeat that to myself like 10, 20 times a day. I, when I'm doing my Qigong and my EFT tapping in the morning, I'm tapping into my body, into my meridians, and I'm tapping different points of my body saying, I create abundance from an infinite source. And that's really shifted my whole... Because I used to think money came from other people. It does not come from other people. It can come through other people, but really it comes from source comes from the universe and when you get out when you expand your view to be like so much bigger than just this world you're like oh wait this planet earth is such a tiny 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 little fraction of the universe like the universe embodies true abundance if you observe nature and you observe you know just observe a forest or the grains of sand on a beach or the drops of water in an ocean or the stars in the galaxy or the amount of galaxies in the universe like or the amount of cells in our body, you know, trillions upon trillions. And if you notice how the universe is expanding further away from itself, like faster than the speed of light and like more galaxies are created like per second than we could even fathom, like that is mind blowing. And the more you start to just study how massive this universe is, the more you start to really believe in abundance because scarcity is an illusion. It's we are tricked and programmed into believing that 
this planet is scarce and there's limited resources to go around. And that's, you know, a lot of that's because we've been misusing resources. People have been hoarding resources and we've been not using the right resources in the right way. So um, if we're in harmony with nature, there is so much to go around. Like every single being on this planet can just be thriving on every single level. We can all have way, to, way more than we could ever eat and drink and so much you know there's just so much abundance so the more you observe the natural universe the natural world the more you really believe in abundance because you see there is like no such thing as scarcity it's only this man-made illusion um, i'm a firm believer that we do not manifest abundance we manifest blockages to abundance abundance is naturally present in the universe uh, we we just block block it we create blockages to it by believing it's scarce or by falling into these lack matrix matrices and scarcity programs like most of us have been inundated with negative beliefs and fear about money since we were a little kid you know all i ever heard was we can't afford that that's too expensive money doesn't grow on trees what do you think i am rockefeller what do you think i'm made of money um or you're greedy you're selfish if you want nice stuff or uh, other people, other people are suffering. How you know you you're greedy for wanting that, or you know, like there's just so many negative programming, and then like all of my you know friends growing up, it was always oh I I wish I could, man, I just don't have any money. Like oh I would, but I'm so broke right now, dude. I would, but I'm broke as fuck. Or dude, I wish I could come with you, but I'm, just, I'm fucking broke right now. Like that's all I heard from all my friends and family my whole life, and we become like the people we associate with. So like. My family had a scarcity mindset. Even the family members that had a lot more money than me, they were still on a super scarcity paradigm because it doesn't matter how much money you have or don't have. Like, there's people that have, like, millions of dollars that are living in scarcity and they're hoarding it and they're fearful and they're not generous and all these things like that. And then there's people that barely have anything and they're, like, on a full abundance frequency. They're happy to share with you. They're not worried about it. They know everything's going to work out. They know their needs are going to be taken care of. Um, in this book that I'm reading right now, it's called Get What You Want. And it's one of the things it says is like, and I've opened to this page like 20 times. It says like, you needn't ever worry about your basic needs and your survival. Like uh, a, f a mechanism was set in place long before you came into this life that your physical needs will always be met. And the only way you could like, mess that up as if you're like on a frequency of being scared and fearful about it but if you just trust and know that you're going to always be taken care of somehow it's so amazing you can heal the habit of worry and embrace the habit of love embrace the habit of faith and just trust um so yeah those are a few things that really helped me um just understanding that i'm everything the more i meditate and the more i listen to spiritual teachers like ram das Sadhguru, Baba Muji, um, all these people that I'm listening to are showing me that I am everything. I am abundance. I am the whole universe. Like I am God. I am creating my own reality. Um, and only I'm the only one that could like withhold money from myself or abundance from myself. Um, and it's it's really interesting to think about like why would I hold, withhold a part of myself from myself? Because I don't think I don't deserve it. So when you start to like become conscious of all these programs that are running, you start to catch them. And the more you just catch these the limiting beliefs as they come up, the more you can just rewire them. Every time a limiting belief comes up, or you get scared or you, you feel that frequency of lack and worry coming up because you have a bill due or because someone didn't pay you or because... It's the money that you thought you were getting didn't come through or because you maybe spent too much or you you made a purchase that maybe wasn't like that you ha you kind of have buyer's remorse about or something like that and like you, f you see those frequencies coming back up just observe it oh that's my old programming oh that's the scarcity matrix that i was programmed into that's not even my truth that's not the truth that's not my nature okay i remember i create abundance from an infinite source money is fun and easy to generate People love to pay me. These are all mantras and affirmations that I write down and repeat multiple times a day. And another random little trick that I did for a long time that helped me, because I used to have this negative connotation with money like many of us do. Like I thought money was the root of all evil or that, all, you know, it was wrong to want money or it wasn't spiritual to like 
have money and so I repelled it so super hard and what I would do is I would draw every day when I was journaling I would draw hearts peace signs um, smiley faces positive energy symbols like vortexes I'd draw all these like positive symbols and then I would draw a dollar bill sign like a money sign next to it and it, it, at first when I started doing it it felt really weird like it felt like I was putting something that like wasn't sacred with all these other sacred symbols and that showed me oh you obviously think money is bad other why do, otherwise why would you feel this weird resistance just by you know writing a peace sign and a heart and then a money sign and the money sign feels like it's some different frequency like so then it showed that I was projecting a negative frequency onto money because money is just a neutral tool can be used for good or bad it's just like electricity I could I can kill someone with electricity or I can cook them dinner and save their life with electricity uh, same with money you know I can donate it to good causes I can do wonderful things with it I can support beautiful people there's so many awesome things I can do with money I could also use it to build weapons and create war and create suffering um, so it's a neutral tool, but I realized that I was projecting a negative perspective onto it. And over the last two or three years of writing peace signs and love and heart signs and stuff next to money signs, and I now it, there's no resistance. Now I can write a money sign and a heart and a smiley face and like have the same positive connotation with all of them. Um, and an, another big, big, big thing that really helped me and, and Mother Ayo, Grandmother Ayahuasca showed me this too is that she just said, you're placing way too much importance on money. Stop putting it on a pedestal. Because anything we put on a pedestal, we, we make it more separate from ourselves. And then it's harder to achieve. We only put something on a pedestal if we think it's like difficult to obtain or it's hard to get or it's, you know, it's going to be this big thing in our life. And it's all about decreasing the importance of it. Like money is just a neutral tool and it's like it's not really going to make your life like that much better or anything like that. So if we let go of the illusion thinking that like, oh, once I have all this money, then then I'll be happy or then I'll be free or then I won't be stressed. That used to be my biggest belief is I was like, man, money's like the only thing I stress about. If I could if I just had billions, and billions of dollars, like then I wouldn't be stressed. And that was such a, an illusion, such a toxic illusion. I had to it was actually the other way around. I thought that once once I had all this money and once my financial situations improved, then I would be less stressed. It was the exact opposite. Once I became less stressed, then my financial situations improved dramatically. So a lot of times we have it backwards thinking these external things are going to bring us emotions that we want to feel. But if we can feel the emotions first, then the external things will change because we're creating our reality on an electromagnetic level, our thoughts are electric and our feelings are magnetic. So that's why we want brain heart coherence. That's why we want our thoughts and emotions to all to and our actions to all be aligned in harmony with the, with each other. I could if I'm thinking a thought such as I am abundant. I create abundance from an infinite source. But then I'm feeling an emotion of scarcity and fear and worry then I'm out of coherence because my brain is thinking one thing, so the electrical charge is doing one thing, and then my emotions are thinking another thing, so the magnetic charge is on a different frequency and they're not going to align up. They're not going to attract what I want. But if the emotions, which are the magnets, and the thoughts, which are the electricity, if those are aligned together, and my, my actions, my, my words, my thoughts, my actions, all these things are aligned, then I'm going to create what I want almost effortlessly. And money really is easy to create when, when, when you're on the frequency. I've noticed it's all, just your, it's all just your energy. When you're feeling abundant and grateful and stoked and generous and all these things and you're just having fun and you're not worried about it, like money just flows easily. And then when you get scared and worried about it, it starts, you just repel it like crazy. Um, Another, so you got to take it off a pedestal. Stop making money so important. Just, it's just another thing, you know what I mean? And like, if you can accept where you are right now in relationship to abundance of money and all that, if you're just going to accept it, embrace it, rather than thinking that you'd be so much happier or so much less stressed if things changed, just say, you know what? This is where I am right now. This is where I'm at on my journey and it's all good. I totally love and accept myself for this place I'm at because I used to withhold love for myself because I wasn't financially successful yet. 
And I thought I would love myself more if I became successful and I thought other people would love me more and other people would respect me more. And I had to let go of all of that and say, I just come, I'm completely unconditionally love myself where I'm at. And I started to realize, like perceive myself as a wealthy person way before I ever had financial blessings. And when I was still, you know, I was still overdrafting and struggling to eat and all this stuff. And I started to shift onto a frequency of wealth and then everything in my external reality shifted to, to match my internal reality. The entire universe is always mirroring your relationship to yourself. It's always mirroring your internal subconscious frequency. So if you want to know what your subconscious is programmed to, simple, just look at the results of your life. If you want to know what your subconscious beliefs are about money, look at your bank account. If you want to know what your subconscious beliefs are about your health, look in the mirror. How do you feel? You know, these, all of it, you know, the subconscious is running 90% of the show, if not more. So, you know, we really have to reprogram ourselves on a subconscious level. And, oh crap. In order to know what our subconscious is, is we just look at what our, what's showing up in our results and we can start to shift that. And, you know, all of these things are going to help you shift your subconscious, surrounding yourself, listening to podcasts like this, surrounding yourself with people that are on this frequency, meditating, journaling, qigong, eating high quality foods. You know, I spend way more money on food now than I used to. And I just keep making more money because that your body is your ultimate manifestation vehicle and your body is withholding is is holding a frequency and it's attracting whatever frequency you're on back to you so i started putting high quality superfoods and organic fair trade bomb food in my body and i started attracting more abundance and prosperity because i was i wasn't putting you know top of ramen which is the cheapest food you can get or you know like i was I stopped buying what was cheap and I started buying what my body actually needed to thrive. So I have more energy now, more creativity, more clarity. I'm on a higher frequency and so I'm, e I'm able to make money a lot easier and pay for that food a lot easier. People say eating, eating healthy is expensive. It's really not. Most of the people that say that be going and they spend like 12, 15 bucks at the fast food to fill themselves up with junk. Um, when they could spend like $3 at the farmer's market and have like way more, you know what I mean? So like a lot of that's just some old programming and certain superfoods. And yes, it is like more expensive to buy organic than a non-organic. Um, but you make more money because you're on a higher frequency and you don't have all this glyphosate and all these um, toxic chemicals, or at least as many toxic chemicals in your being. And so your vibration is less toxic and you, you know, you can just, you can be more creative. You can, you'll attract different type of people, you'll be more inspired to take certain actions which bring money and you know. So I've noticed I've made a lot more money since I started treating my body with more love and respect and just loving myself more and nourishing myself more, filling myself up with higher frequency things, you know. I used to like I remember like I would go to three different grocery stores because one grocery store would have certain things cheaper and the other one would have other things cheaper and then I like after I realized like, you know, that's total scarcity like I'm spending and I'm going out of my way an extra 30 minutes to save $2. Like, is my time is 30 minutes of my life worth $2? Like, like, come on. Um, or even just like, I would buy, I don't know, like I'm buying like a, a protein bar or something. And I'm going to buy the one that's like a dollar 79 instead of the one that's a dollar 99 because the 20 cents is cheaper. And I feel like, I just had a, such a scarcity mindset, even though the one that was 20 cents more was higher quality and it was actually more tasty and it's what I wanted more. I would buy the cheaper one because I didn't feel like I deserved it. Um, rolling, walking around with shoot holes in my shoes and, you know, rocking the same. And I'm not a very materialistic person at all. Um, so I don't like there's a lot of like material things that I don't necessarily value or care about as much as like some people. Um, but I have noticed that like how you do one thing is how you do all things. So like if I'm rolling around with dirty, ripped up shoes, like what else in my consciousness and my being is like dirty and ripped up metaphorically? Um, how do you feel when you put on your clothes? Do you feel abundant? Do you feel like the best version of yourself? Everything you're doing is creating and carrying a frequency with it. So like if you want to feel abundant when you get dressed and when you go out in the world, you want to feel like the best, highest version of yourself. 
how does the water drink that you drink make you feel? You know, or if you're drinking tap water, how's that making you feel? I'm drinking Kongan water now, which is the highest vibration water you can get on the planet Earth, and it's living water that's, you know, pH balanced and electrically charged and um, molecularly, molecularly, I can't even say it, restructured it. Like, it's just, it's next level. I've been making way more money since I started drinking this water, and I'm just, I'm vibrating, like, we're 70 to 80 percent water, really like 100 percent water, if you really think about it. Um, and water is just like such a divine, sacred being that is a, a carrier of frequency. And I don't know, I just I put higher quality water in my body. I have higher quality thoughts and emotions. And so I'm and then I attract higher quality circumstances. Um, so that's a big thing. You know, every single thing that we do all affects like we can't compartmentalize like this thing over here and that thing over here. It's all connected. How you take a bath affects your abundance into your bank account how you check your mail effect like every little tiny thing that seems insignificant how you brush your teeth like all these little things all matter how you do one thing is how you do everything so start to notice and observe yourself more and just notice how you're showing up if you uh, if you're not taking good care of what you do have then how can you expect the universe to bless you with more um just like if if I were to go buy my daughter a bunch of toys and she she never thanked me for them, she just let them go to shit, she let them get broken and left them outside and didn't care about them and never played with them and never appreciated them, um, and then she's like asking me for more of the same toys, I'd be like, why am I going to go buy you more of these toys? I just bought you a bunch and you just let them all break and you left them outside and you never even cared about them and you never even touched them or played with them, like... I'm not going to want to be, I'm not going to be inspired to go buy her new toys, but if she's like loving them, taking really good care of them, thanking me for them all the time, being super stoked on them, and then she asks me for more, I'm going to be like stoked to get her some more because I'm like, yo, she really loves these and really appreciates them. Um, so be a good, it's called stewardship. If you're a good steward of everything that you have, the universe will bless you more. So how do you keep your house? How do you keep your environment how do you keep your clothes if you want new, nicer clothes? Like, are you respecting and appreciating the clothes that you do have? Are you folding them up nice and hanging them up and being grateful every time you wear them? Or are you just, like, tossing them on the floor, not caring about them, letting them get, like, ripped up and moldy and whatever? Like, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So if you become a better steward of what you do have, just take care. Like, I'm noticing that. Like, I'm really grateful for my car. I'm going to try to start just keeping it even cleaner and taking better care of it to show the universe and show myself that I value it uh, rather than just being lazy and taking the easy road or whatever. Um, so take good care of what you do have and be super grateful for what you do have. Fall in love with where you're at because it's all about the journey. It's not about the destination. It's not like get, a, get away from thinking that you're going to be so much happier when you achieve X, Y, and Z. I used to think once I have millions of dollars and I live in Hawaii, then I'll, you know, my life will be so good. And now I'm realizing it's the journey to get to those things that's that's the fun part. Those things will be short lived. Once you do get there, it'll be cool, and then you just immediately want the next thing. So, fall in love with the journey, even if you are just like completely been struggling. Just fall in love with like where you're at, embrace where you're at instead of resisting it, and just accept this is where I needed to be. When I finally did this, it changed everything. When I finally stopped trying to, because all my suffering was coming, wasn't coming from a lack of money. It was coming from the fact that I thought I wasn't supposed to have a lack of money. I thought I was supposed to be rich and have all these things. And so it was like my resistance to the situation that was causing my suffering, not the situation itself. And then I just embraced, you know what? This is what my soul needed to learn. This is the lessons that I needed to go through. This is like part of my dharma, part of my karma, part of my path, like, so I just embrace it and just said, okay, this is, this is fun. And then I'll appreciate it that much more when I am, like when I do experience nice things, I'm super, super grateful. You know what I mean? Like I'm grateful every time I drive my car because I used to take the bus everywhere and walk everywhere. I'm grateful when I eat these superfoods because I still remember what it's like to like not have any food or to have to eat top of ramen or something because that's all I could get my hands on. I'm super grateful now and I'm just I'm embracing where I'm at on the journey. Um, took taking money off a pedestal and just trusting that like hey it's not this 
big thing that's outside of me. It's just, it's, it's part of me and I can tap into it easily. And it's not going to change, like, money's not going to change my life. I'm going to change my life. I'm not putting all this extra power on something outside of me. Um, observing the abundance of nature, just looking at the stars and the grains of sand and the trees. And just look how naturally abundant everything in nature is. Um, I'm catching these limiting beliefs every time the scarcity programs do come up. I just realize, oh, that's my old programming rewire it, choose consciously to think new thoughts and feel new emotions, surrounding myself with expanders, that means people that have already activated and expanded awareness of abundance that are embodied in this frequency. Um, and then another thing too that's really helping me is I'm treating myself more often. I'm able, I'm giving more gifts to others and I'm giving more gifts to myself. You know, just the other day, like I went, I was looking at all these different chocolate bars because I wanted to treat myself with some chocolate. I love dark chocolate. Um, and like normally I would buy the one that's like $3 or something, but I bought like an $8 bar of chocolate because I was like, this is like, this is like the headies and I'll appreciate it more. I'll probably eat it slower and uh, cherish it more. And it just felt good. I was like, you know what? I just, I made some good money. I did all these things. I had a productive week. Um, I've been on a high vibe. I've been, um, staying on top of all my good habits and routines operating from my higher self like I deserve to splurge a little bit and like what's the difference of five dollars if I buy an eight dollar bar of chocolate versus a three dollar bar of chocolate like I'm gonna, gonna be supporting you know a higher vibrational company that's on a on a, a different level and just showing myself that I'm worthy so I even like you know do things like get a get a massage buy yourself some higher quality foods or essential oils or, you know, buy yourself some little gifts, gift yourself some, some new house plants and raise the energy in your home. Um, treat yourself more and just don't be afraid to like reward yourself and don't be afraid to just give gifts because it always comes back. It's impossible to outgive the universe. The more you generously donate and serve, the more it'll come back to you. And really, the more you just step into a level of being of service, being fit to serve others and having value that you can offer to the world, then money will just naturally be a byproduct of that. It'll come come to you just because you're serving others. You're making other people's lives better. And so naturally, you're just going to be blessed by the universe. And... Another thing before I'm going to wrap this episode up here in just a sec, um, cause we've just kind of been, we've been going fast on all these little things and nuances that help me. Um, another, just a couple quick tips are looking up the, and understanding principles of feng shui, because that can really affect what you bring in, you know, how your bed is positioned, is your stove top clean? Like the stove top is considered to be like the wealth part of your, the, uh, um, like a wealth area of your house. You always want your stove to be super clean. Um, you know, like don't want stuff under your bed. Um, the way you position different furniture and like, how, you know, is the, is the, is your front door inviting? Is it nice? Is there a welcome mat? Is, is there a bunch of clutter right by your front door? Like all of these things can affect your abundance. And it's crazy just by shifting and moving some objects around in your house by doing some deep cleaning and some decluttering, all of this can bring in and invite new energy. I notice that I usually achieve higher levels of, abund of abundance of prosperity anytime I go through and declutter and get rid of anything that's no longer serving me and just like let go. I make space for the new. Um, if your closet's just like stuffed to the brim with all these clothes that are unfolded and all this stuff and you don't have any room for anything new, then uh, you're, it's going to be harder to attract that, that new wardrobe that you want or whatever. So keep your environment clean. That goes along with just being, you know, a good steward of your material possessions and, and not just materials, but just your relationships, you know, all of these things are part of wealth and abundance. If you really value and appreciate your relationships, they're going to come around you more. Like, think about this. Think about if, if you're super needy, and super um, obsessive over someone like in a relationship. Say, for example, say I, I had a crush on a girl and I was, I was like super 
always scared that she wasn't going to like me and always scared she wasn't going to come around. And I was just always, always worried about her and always fearful about her. And I became really clingy and really obsessive and really needy. And then I like, sometimes I get all mad at her anytime she wasn't around. And if she like didn't text me back, I'm, I'm like texting her things like, Oh, I guess you don't like me anymore. Like, all right, I guess like you don't want to be in my life. <laughs> you know, like just like all this crazy clingy shit. Like, it's the opposite of how I am. Um, but a lot of us could be like that with money. And so think about that. If you think of money, money is a consciousness. It's a, it's a being. It's an alive entity that, you know, we have collectively kind of given birth to. And think about so many of us, we want more success. We want more money, whatever. And like yet we're talking down on it. We're talking down on rich people. We're talking... Oh, money's the root of all evil. Oh, money's stupid. Oh, yeah, I hate money. You did it. Like I've heard so many of my friends say the, all of so many negative things about money, and she can hear you. She doesn't want to come around you if you if she thinks you hate her or if you're super clingy or obsessive and weird about her. Like she wants to come to you if you're confident and you feel worthy of her and you feel deserving of her and you feel like you're going to take you kn she knows that you're going to take good care of her because you love her and appreciate her and respect her and utilize her energy wisely and that you're generous with her you don't hoard her because you know like a woman's not going to want to date me if i'm being all like clingy or if i'm disrespecting her and misusing her but if, if she knows that i honor her and respect her and value her and like that I'm also like secure with her without her, then she'll be highly attracted to me. There's a quote in the Bible. I can't remember exactly where it says this, but it says like, um, to he who has more shall be given to he who has not even that which he has shall be taken. So it's basically saying if you have money or success or abundant, whatever you want, and you you know you have it then more will be given to you because you're not like on this you're not feeling scared about it but if you don't have then even what you do have will be taken because you're on this frequency of not having and the universe will always match your frequency um so the more you can just become super super grateful take it off a pedestal appreciate all the money that's in your life all the abundance that's in your life and really just acknowledge it um it'll come, it'll come to you more because like, for example, what if, what if you constantly showed up for someone like say a family member, you were always doing things for them. You always like dropping whatever you're doing to go help them out anytime they needed you. And then they never thanked you for it. They never appreciated you for it. And then the one time that you were too busy and you couldn't come because you were at work or something, they got all butthurt and mad and, Oh, you don't love me. You don't support me. And you'd be like, yo, what the hell? Like, I'm always there for you. Like I always show up. I've had your back like our whole life. I've... And then the one time I'm not, you like freak out. Like, all right, I don't want to come be around you anymore. I don't want to come help you out anymore. That's kind of the frequency a lot of us can get on with money. It's like we only think about or acknowledge it when she's gone rather than deeply appreciating when all the times that she has shown up, all the times that we have had our needs met and taken care of. Like, you know, so put all of our attention on that. Thank you for all the times you've shown up, all the times we've been able to eat and drink and pay for the things we wanted and given and received gifts and all these, you know, let's focus our attention on that and she'll want to be around us more, you know? It's like if all we do is complain about her and stress over her, she's not going to want to be around us. And, you know, would you want to be around someone if all you ever did was try to help them, but then, like, all they ever did was complain about you and get mad at you and get stressed about you, like eventually you you're not going to want to be around them you're going to want to be around someone else who has fun with you someone else who is a grateful for you that likes to share you that likes to like bring you along on fun things like that's really how you activate the abundance frequency and a big part of it too is just being more playful and more trusting and just like surrendering not being so tight with all our money and all our resources just like being more flowy just trusting that hey life is fun let's enjoy it let's not take it so seriously and money is just a neutral tool that we can use to help us create blessings for others and help us have fun and um yeah it's just it's something it's like a nice little neutral neutral tool that can be a wonderful companion to us 
if we respect it and use it right and appreciate it instead of just constantly worrying and stressing and blaming, complaining and putting other people down. And um, another cool thing, too, is you can talk to your money. It's alive. It's conscious. Talk to your money. Say thank you. I, you know, I got a couple hundred bucks sitting right here. Let me grab it. I got some crisp hundred dollar bills rubbing up against this microphone and I'm just blessed at it saying thank you for being in my life please bless and multiply for the greatest good of all concerned please help me do amazing things I respect you I value you I appreciate you thank you and we're not putting money on some type of pedestal thinking it's more important like because we are money we are the creators of infinite amounts of money so um it's just something to be should be grateful for and it's a friend and then we can literally talk to it and um I, I i put crystals on it i bless it under my buddha statues i do different things like that that i feel like help me um attract the money but i'm never i'm never doing those things out of an energy of scarcity of like oh i better you know, do this so I can have more money because I need to pay that bill. It's more so just like, hey, I'm stoked that I got this money. Let's let's keep it growing and flowing. Uh, um, and yeah, just the healthier I eat, the more I stay on top of my good habits, my journaling, my meditation, the qigong, going out in nature, surrounding myself with good people, the more money keeps flowing to me because it's all, the universe is all just responding to our energy and I'm, I'm putting out a different energy than I used to. I used to constantly put out an energy of fear and lack and worry and doubt and now my energy is love and faith and service and gratitude and you know things are flowing a lot easier i'm recording this episode on a expensive nice new microphone um and i'm just very grateful for the way things have shifted in my life so these are these are just a few things that have helped me activate a new level of awareness awareness concerning abundance prosperity and um finances specifically so it's something that we don't need to struggle with but if you are struggling with just trust that's part of your path and you will learn a lot like if i had been given if i just inherited millions of dollars when i was a kid i don't think i would have gone through all the growth that i've gone through and this deep spiritual transformations that i've gone through so i'm so grateful for everything in my life playing out exactly how it is. It's all divinely orchestrated, happening for us, not to us. It's all a huge blessing, and I'm just super, super grateful to exist. And, you know, it's cool. I think that money is eventually going to shift. We've we've traded different things. You know, seashells used to be our currency at one point. Um, oils and spices were our currency at one point. Now it's this fiat currency, and all the fiat currencies eventually collapse, and I think we're shifting into things like cryptocurrency and a more um, service-based, compassion-based, like giving, trading economy. Um, and I just notice a lot more of us are waking up to sharing our products and services. Like a lot, I notice a lot of people in the spiritual communities are doing um, just donation-based work. They show up and they do the work that they love and they let people pay them what they want to pay. And there's oftentimes just recommended donations or sliding scales or things like that and it seems like a lot of us are thriving on that level and I've even been doing that as I've stepped out of fight or flight when people want my products and services I value them and I know what they're worth and I also just I'm like pretty easy going with it I'm like yeah pay me what you think it's worth bro yeah usually I charge around this range but shoot me whatever you think it's worth and Almost every time I've been telling people to pay me what they think it's worth, they almost always pay me more than I would have expected. And I'm just constantly every day raising my wealth frequency, raising my self-love to know that I am deserving and worthy. Um, I have this lyric in one of my new songs that says, like, um, I've been feeling so abundant since I stopped chasing money and instead started facing all within that kept it from me. Learned that I was one with all the riches on the planet and I was flowing. All it really took was switching up my mindset. Um, and it's, that's really all I did. That's I switched up my frequency. I switched up how I was thinking and feeling and that shifted how I was showing up and 
shifted how I was interacting with people and what I was speaking about and you know everything started becoming better and better in my life so I'm just grateful that I'm in a position to come on here and share these words with you there's a lot more that I could speak on when it comes to abundance and prosperity um, I know I, I kind of focus mostly on money and finances during this episode and abundance and wealth is just so much more than that. Like I said, it's our relationships, our physical vitality, our, our connection to source. And really, there's nothing in the universe that's not abundant. So all all that really has to be done to unlock the abundance codes is to rise above the illusion that we're not already abundant and rise above all these lies and illusions and these negative stories and negative programming that we've been tricked into believing for all these years and once we just let go of all that stuff that's in the way then our natural abundant state of oneness with everything just emerges and then you know when we really step into alignment with the higher good and we kind of step into that force of, of benevolence that the universe is trying to carry out and we just become a part of that we become an instrument of God we become a tool of service for the divine a servant of God then we can create all our dreams and desires like with so much ease, grace, and flow. So hopefully you got some amazing tips. I know I just dropped a lot of gems on you. Um, I, I recommend definitely going and getting those books, The Illusion of Money and The Abundance Codes. Um, the Abundance Codes is like a $120 book, so it kind of expands your abundance frequency just by purchasing it, just because the more you invest in yourself, the more you start to believe that you're worthy and the universe starts to reflect that to you because you're showing yourself that you're deserving. And, you know, when you invest into a life coach or a mentor or an online course or something, this takes some courage and you have to elevate, you have to step up into a higher vibration just to even take that action. And so just by even like buying this book or enrolling in these courses or hiring that coach, you automatically raise your your frequency on that kind of a level and um, you know donating and giving can definitely increase your vibration in a big way if you're doing it from the heart doing it because you really want to not because like you think you're gonna get something but because you just genuinely are in a state of aligned overflow living in the higher self knowing that you're blessed knowing the universe has your back the entire universe is conspiring to help you thrive it is noble for you to be rich. You are a good person. It is noble for you to have lots of money so you can go bless others with it, so you can go do great things. It is noble for you to be overflowing with health and wellness and vitality and love. And you deserve it, and so does everyone you love. The entire world deserves you to be prosperous, to be thriving, to be glowing, to just be living out your dreams to the fullest and the more that you step into that the more good you're going to do for everybody so just keep work keep doing the work to get out of your own way and uncovering your true essence of an abundant creator and your life will just keep getting better and better just like mine has so i love you so 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 much from the center of my heart i am sending you the frequency of peace and prosperity May the rest of your day be filled with joy. May the rest of your week be filled with the blessings. And may the next few months bring just unexpected magic to you beyond your wildest dreams. I love you with all of my heart. Please shoot me a message on Instagram. Or you can email me, burnellwashburn at gmail.com. If you got value from this episode, you can go check me out on patreon.com slash burnellwashburn if you want to support this show and support my spirit in general. Um, and yeah, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been jamming the music. Thank you to everyone who pre-ordered the most recent album, the Bernie Quarantino Project. Um, that was cool to see a lot of abundance flow in from that. Um, just, just doing what I love every day. My GPS is my joy. And my joy tells me where to go. And that I just keep going there. And it, everything keeps working out. So have faith. You deserve it. You deserve all the blessings. And I just, I'm holding space that your life is going to be filled with miracles. The more you listen to this podcast and the more you surround yourself with this type of energy, things are just going to keep thriving for you. So sending you all the good vibes. I will see you hella soon on another episode. Peace and richest blessings.